I think the thing to understand is that um, pixels are not really collectors. They don't collect light. Um, they actually just control the amount of charge that passes through through them um, depending on how much light hits them. So they're more of a valve. Um, uh, you could think of it as a relay. It gets a little bit of voltage and controls a lot of voltage or current. Um, or you could think of it as a transistor or a diode. How, what, whatever. It, it, it's actually a photoelectric diode. So um, light hits it. And there's the light coming through, going through the little micro lens, getting collected. There's a color filter and light hits the valve. The valve controls the charge. So here's your charge coming through. Charge, charge, charge. It's controlled by the valve and comes out. So if we have a lot of red light hitting the pixel, it opens up and your charge is transmitted through the pixel so you get a lot of electrical charge. So that reads as a lot of voltage um, or a lot of current and um, then that goes off to the analog to digital converter where it's converted from a volt reading to numbers from 0 to 255. The cool part about big pixels is that they can handle a lot of current coming through. Um, the problem with small pixels is they can't. Um, and think of this as a garden hose versus a fire hose. Um, if you um, have a fire hose hooked up and uh, your valve can handle a fire hose, you're going to get a lot of water coming through. So you're going to get a lot of information. There's going to be a lot of difference between no information and lots of information. Um, whereas if you have a little garden hose, um, you can't control that big flow, so you're going to get a smaller amount of information. So um, there will be less difference between zero and full uh, full current, so or full water. <laughs> and likewise, if you try to pump a lot of current through a small valve, you're going to get leakage. So just think of if you uh, try to hook up a fire hose to a little uh, garden spigot, it's going to start leaking. Uh, so that's essentially the difference, it, and it's all about signal to noise ratio. It's all about getting uh, good information coming through your pixel, controlling that information, and how how much uh, charge goes through that valve to uh, translate to, uh, to a, a, a digital um, value that will give you color and image information. Okay, this is from a Kodak uh, uh, PowerPoint piece from uh, oh, quite a while ago. Um, but this is uh, the difference between a full frame CCD and interline CCD and a CMOS sensor. And sort of it's talking about the layout and uh, the, the real estate on the sensor, on the, uh, the chip really that's um, devoted to uh, capturing the information. So here's your full frame CCD. Um, that's just a anti-aliasing filter. These are a couple of layers of, of um, color filtration. Um, but you can see essentially your active pixel area is uh, the full square and there's just some uh, space in the middle for uh, offloading the charge. The charge will go from one pixel to the next and then get dumped off on the actual edge of the chip. It's what they used to call a bucket brigade. So the, uh, the key to understand is that you, you have a huge amount of area on the sensor that's actually used by the, by the pixel itself. The interline CCD, uh, the red here is ind indicating the actual photoelectric diode or the pixel. Um, this other stuff is uh, essentially circuitry to offload the the charge or the the um, as we saw before the voltage. Um, so it's not as much of a bucket brigade, but it still is kind of a bucket brigade. The charge moves to the next pixel and then gets dumped off on this. Um, but the key to understand is that even for this big area, you have a relatively small um, actually uh, re a relatively small actual sensing area. CMOS uh, is a little bit different a um, little bit different circuitry but uh, again the red is the diode. Um, the cool part about uh, CMOS is that it reads out each sensor um, individually uh, and this gives you a lot of 
flexibility. You can actually um, um, read it out faster. You don't need a shutter, for example. You can read out during the exposure, which is why you get live view. Um, so let's zoom in on this. Again, is the um, this is the full frame CCD, but this is I just want to give you a close up on the those details. But again, this is your photoelectric diode, and this is just circuitry to offload the the charge. This is the interline CCD. Again, you get your photodiode. This is your shutter gate. Uh, the interline CCD has a built-in shutter on the um, on the pixel at the pixel level. Um, then you get your vertical readout, readout, which is um, you know how you how you grab the information from each pixel. CMOS has a, a, a similar photodiode. Again, that's your valve uh, controlling the amount of charge that goes through. And then all this stuff is uh, essentially cir circuitry to allow individual readout uh, of this of the charge. Uh, from each pixel. So that allows you to do stuff like live view and um, and stuff like that. Just because we're totally geeking out here, this is uh, a, f a photo micrograph of, um, of a, an actual DSLR uh, sensor cross-section. This is the little micro lens. These are the color filters. And this is actually the photodiode or you know what, what's called the, um, the pixel uh, well. Um, and uh, this is the silicon base, and then this is all the uh, all the circuitry to to offload it. Finally, this is uh, this is one of my favorite sort of <laughs> engineers gone mad um, diagrams, but I think it it does a really good job um, explaining the sort of an what goes on in the analog to digital converter. The analog system is the readout from the pixel. So again, remember we get that charge going into the pixel. Uh, the amount of charge coming through the pixel is controlled by the diode part that um, is uh, controlled by the amount of light that hits the pixel. So you get a lot of charge coming through. You get big numbers. This is about showing half charge. Um, so you get the analog system. That's read out in volts. So here we have between 0 microvolts, millivolts, and 1 millivolt. So that's 0.6666 volts. That's translated on an 8-bit scale from 0 to 255. So 0 would be no volts, 255 would be maximum volts, and 129 would be medium gray volts, <laughs> um, which is translated to colors in your, in your system. Not to put too fine a point on it, but this is where you can see how the quantity of information coming in through the analog system um, gives you more uh, and richer information. Imagine this being water, okay? Let's say we have a big fire hose and we're measuring the amount of um, water going through our pixel um, and we have uh, white light so we have lots and lots of water. So let's say we get 20 gallons um, going here. Uh, so this would read zero gallons, and this would read 20, uh, 20 gallons maximum, and we would get uh, this translated from zero to 20 gallons into zero to 255 regardless. Everything in an 8-bit system gets translated from zero to 255. So this could be 20 gallons, or it could be a couple of drops, if that's the maximum the system can uh, can handle. So if you have a little tiny system uh, and you get a couple of drops, let's say five milliliters of uh, water, then you have a range of zero to five milliliters. That also gets translated from zero to 255, basic 8-bit system, except that now instead of having 20 gallons of water to get to gather your information with, you only have uh, five milliliters, a little tiny bit of information. So a lot less information, a lot less richness of detail and color information. That's basically the bottom line of the issue. Uh, the more stuff you can pump through that valve, the more rich your information will be and the better information you'll have to make the analog to digital conversion.